टू किल अ मॉकिंग बर्ड बाय हार्पर ली कैरेक्टर्स समरी एनालिसिस हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द डिस्कोर्स हार्पर ली वॉज एन अमेरिकन नॉवलिस्ट हु इज नोन फॉर हर नॉवल टू किल अ मॉकिंग बर्ड विच वन द पोलिट प्राइज इन नाइनटीन हंड्रेड सिक्सटी वन टू किल अ मॉकिंग बर्ड वॉज पब्लिश ऑन जुलाई इलेवन नाइनटीन हंड्रेड सिक्सटी एंड इट बिकेम अ ह्यूज सक्सेस The novel is of the South Gothic genre which deals with the issues of racial discrimination from the viewpoint of two little kids. The novel deals with rape, racial inequality, class discrimination, courage, compassion and gender roles in the deep south during the period of 1930s. The deep south of the United States included those states that were heavily dependent on plantations and slavery. The story is about two siblings, their extraordinary experiences and how they grow up while losing their innocence. The story was based on the real life experiences of Harper Lee during her childhood. Her father, Amasa Coleman Lee, was a newspaper editor and a lawyer who once defended two black men accused of murdering a white storekeeper. Both clients, a father and his son, were hanged. The plot and characters of the novel are loosely based on Harper Lee's own experiences with her family, friends and relatives and an incident that happened in her hometown in Monroeville, Alabama in 1936. Lee's older brother Edwin was the inspiration for the character of Jam. Harper Lee was a childhood friend of Truman Capote and she assisted him in writing his renowned novel In Cold Blood. Truman Capote became the inspiration for the character of Dill. Truman once commented that the character of Boo Radley was also a real man whom he and Harper Lee knew. Characters of, of To Kill a Mockingbird. Scout or Jean Lewis Finch is the narrator and main character of the novel. She is a 6 years old girl with a tomboyish attitude. She has a fierce disposition towards Annie who challenges her. but at heart she is innocent sympathetic and a believer in goodness jam or jeremy finch is 10 years old the elder brother of scout jam is a quieter and more reserved and innocent child dill harris or charles baker harris is a friend of scout and jam he is around 7 years old with an adventurous and imaginative attitude after her father's death dill's mother remarries but dill fails to adjust to the new family conditions and often tries to escape from it thus he spends his holidays with his aunt who lives next door to the finch family atticus finch is a widower and father of scout and jam he is a lawyer who is highly morally upright and tries to be fair with everyone After the death of his wife he raises his children with the assistance of Kalpurnia his black housekeeper and cook Kalpurnia is a motherly figure of for scout and jam Arthur Boo Radley is a recluse who always remains within his house he had a difficult childhood and it is rumored that once he attacked his father with a pair of scissors and since then no one has seen him the town's people consider him a mad monster He lives with his elder brother Nathan Radley who is highly controlling. Tom Robinson is a black man who is accused of raping a white girl named Myla Evel. He asks help of Atticus Finch who agrees to defend him because he believes that Tom is innocent. Aunt Alexandra is Atticus's elder sister who is a strict traditional woman. She visits Atticus's house to assist him in raising his kids well. Mordy Atkinson is a friendly neighbor of At- Atticus Finch. She is a proud and courageous woman who loves gardening and helps the kids gain a proper perspective on the events surrounding the trial. Bob Evel is the father of Myla Evel. He is a racist, ignorant and evil person who belongs to the lowest substratum of Maycomb society. He is a widower with 9 children. He caught his daughter kissing Tom, proceeded to beat her and then forced her to claim Tom raped her. Miss Carolyn is a school teacher of Scout and Jam. Frances is one of Aunt Alexandra's grandchildren who spends Christmas leaves with Finch family and annoys Scout by being boring and cruel. Uncle Jack is Atticus's brother who is a doctor. Jam and Scout are very fond of Uncle Jack. Mrs. Dubus is a mean old lady who is very sick. She got addicted to morphine. Walter is a classmate of Scout. Mrs. Mr Cunningham is the father of Walter whom Scout recognizes in the mob that came to attack Tom and Atticus. Hack Tate is Maycomb County's sheriff who is an honest and upright man. Summary of To Kill a Mockingbird. 
The novel is set in the period of the Great Depression during the 1930s. Scout Finch lives with her brother Jam and father Atticus Finch in the fictitious town of Maycomb, Alabama. It is a small town where everybody knows each other but they have their social connection according to their economic conditions and birth. Atticus is a morally upright lawyer who earns enough to support his family but he has to work hard for long hours. He lost his wife and takes care of his children with the help of his black servant and cook, Carpurnia, who is a motherly figure for the kids. However, Scout feels Carpurnia is too much strict and she favors Jem. One summer, Jem and Scout befriend a boy named Till, who has come to live in their neighborhood for the summer. The three spend much of their time creating and acting out fantasies. Scout and Jem know the neighborhood well. The only neighbor who puzzles them is the mysterious Arthur Radley, nicknamed Boo, who never comes outside. Dill, being too imaginative, continues to inquire about Boo and the three kids become obsessed with the house called Radley House where Boo lives with his brother Nathan Radley. Dill learns the story that during his childhood, Boo once stabbed his father's leg with scissors and since then he has been jailed in that house and never comes out. Jam and Scout have never seen him, but they have heard that he is incredibly tall, drools and eats neighborhood cats and squirrels. Though all children are fearful of Boo, Dill challenges Jam to go and touch the boundary of Radley House. When Jam does so, Scout says that she saw someone watching them from inside behind a curtain. They try leaving notes for Boo on his windows will with a fishing pole but are caught by Atticus who firmly reprimands them for making fun of a sad man's life. However, the kids continue to explore more about Boo. As the summer vacations end, Dill returns to his hometown. Scout is, a, is big enough to join their school. Though she is excited about going to school, she soon starts disliking it. Her teacher, Miss Caroline, is teaching how to read the alphabet and write but Scout already can read words and sentences. Miss Caroline criticizes her for already knowing how to read and forbids her from writing in cursive. She returns home and complains to Atticus. Her father tells him that Miss Caroline is a new teacher and she will take time in learning how to deal with the eccentricities of various kids. Atticus tells her to understand others' viewpoints by putting herself in their shoes and thinking like them. Summer arrives and Dill returns back to Maycomb. The three kids continue to their exploration of the Radley house. One night, the three kids decide to jump over the boundary of the Radley house and sneak in through the window. Nathan Radley thinks that some burglar is trying to get in and he fires his gun. The three kids get frightened and run away, but while running back, Jam loses his pants in a fence. When he returns in the middle of the night to get them back, they have been neatly folded and the tear from the fence roughly swoon up. The pants were kept folded in the hole of the tree near the Radley house. The kids continue to inspect the Radley house regularly. Jam and Scout find more presents in a hole in that tree, presumably left by the mysterious Boo. Jam would go to the tree near the fence of Radley House to get presents such as pennies, chewing gum, and soap carved figures of little boy and girl who bear a striking resemblance to Scout and Jam. One day, they decide to leave a thank note to the gift giver. But the next day, when Jam goes to the tree, he finds that Nathan Radley has plugged up the hole with cement. That saddens the kids. Dill returns back after the vacation. The next winter brings unexpected cold and snow. During such a cold, Miss Maudie's house catches on fire, while Jam and Scout, shivering, watch the blaze from near the Radley house, someone puts a blanket around Scout without her realizing it. When the kids find it out, Jam suggests that Boo must have put that blanket on Scout. This horrifies Scout, but her father calms her down. Atticus learns about a criminal case in which Tom Robinson, a young black man, is accused of raping Myla Evel, a 19-year-old white girl. Nobody is willing to take the case of Tom as a defending lawyer. The court thus appoints Atticus as Tom's lawyer. 
When Atticus meets Tom, he realizes that Tom is innocent. He further inquires and comes to know that Myla Ewell is the daughter of Bob Ewell, who is a mean and cringy white man whom nobody likes. Furthermore, Bob belongs to the lowest economic class of Maycomb, and hence nobody really wishes to have any relationship with him. Like Atticus, Bob is also a widower with nine kids and Myla is the eldest of them. He learns that despite being 19 years old, Myla doesn't have any friends because the white community of Maycomb despises her for being poor and the daughter of Bob who is a poor and mean person. Any kind of friendly relationship with, between white persons and black persons is totally prohibited in the society and thus Myla is lonely and alienated despite being a white girl. When she meets Tom and finds him near her, she tries to seduce him by trying to kiss him while breaking the social societal taboo. However, Tom wasn't ready for any such prohibited relationship and when he tried to push Myla away to avoid the kiss, Bob Ewell suddenly reached at home and caught them in the act. In anger, Bob started beating Myla brutally right in front of Tom. Tom got frightened and ran away. Later on, Bob forced Myla to accuse Tom of rape. Though Myla took the first step against the societal taboo, she proved to be a coward against her father's anger and followed him and agreed to perjury in court against Tom. Atticus is a morally upright man and he decided to defend Tom in court, though he knows that the jury, being predominantly white and prejudiced against the black, will not allow Tom to go free. Yet, he thinks that his efforts in bringing the truth in front will ease the hatred against black people and will reduce the discrimination to some extent. Little does he know that because of his decision, the white community of Maycom will become his enemy and the enemy of his kids. Meanwhile, Dill Harris also comes to Maycom as he runs away from the prospect of spending the vacation with his new father whom his mother recently married. Jam and Scout are subjected to abuse from other children, even when they celebrate Christmas at the family compound on Finch's Landing. Francis, one of the grandchildren of Aunt Alexandra, teases Scout and tells her that her father brought a bad name and shame to their family by being a nigger lover. Though Atticus urges Scout and Jem to keep calm even when other kids abuse them, Scout fails to control her anger and beats Francis. Francis complains about her misbehavior to Uncle Jack, whom everybody loves. Scout tries to tell him how Francis abused her and her father, but Uncle Jack refuses to listen and punishes her. However, Uncle Jack gives an air rifle to each Scout and Jem, which makes them happy. They take their rifles to Atticus and ask him to teach them how to use them. Atticus refuses to teach them how to shoot. While he allows them to play with the rifles, he advises them that it's a sin to kill a mockingbird. Even Jem, who is much more calm and reserved, finds it difficult when Mrs. Dubas starts abusing his father in front of him. Initially, he tries to avoid and ignore Mrs. Dubas, but one day when she hurls slurs and insults at him about Atticus defending Tom Robinson, Jem retaliates by cutting the top of her beloved camellia bushes. Mrs. Dubas then complains to Atticus about this and demands that Jem should read for her for an hour every day after his school, for a month. Atticus insists that Jem should accept the punishment and he does. Scout suggests that she will also accompany Jam to Mrs. Dubas' house. Jam and Scout do not realize until after she dies that they are helping her break her morphine addiction. After her death, Atticus reveals that Mrs. Dubas was a brave old and lonely woman who needed someone to help him help her in getting rid of her addiction. Jam provided her that assistant by reading to her. Kalpurnia takes them to the local black church where the warm and close-knit community largely embraces the children. When the time of the final trial of Tom comes closer, Atticus's elder sister Aunt Alexandra comes to know about this. She visits Atticus's home to help him in keeping good care of her children. Scout doesn't like Alexandra much because Alexandra is a strict traditional lady who tries to convert Scout from a tomboy to girlish. 
The night before the trial, Tom is moved into the county jail and Atticus, fearing a possible lynching, stands guard outside the jail door all night. Jam is concerned about him and the three children sneak into town to find him. A group of men arrive ready to cause some violence to Tom and threaten Atticus in the process. At first, Jam, Scout and Dill stand aside, but when she senses true danger, Scout runs out and begins to speak to one of the men, the father of one of her classmates in school. Her innocence brings the crowd out of their mob mentality and they leave. During the trial, Ewell's family put forth their evidence. Their statement was that when Bob Ewell was away from his home, Tom came for some household work. Myla was alone at that time and forcibly beat and raped Myla until her father appeared and scared him away. Atticus argues against this accusation and says that all the marks of bruises on Myla's face were on the right side of her face, which means she was most likely punched with a left hand. Tom Robinson's left arm is useless due to an old accident, whereas Mr. Evil leads this with his left. Indirectly, he accuses Bob of brutally beating his daughter. The jury notices that Tom's left hand is useless because of an old injury and there is enough doubt about him being the culprit. People of the black community think that Tom will be freed but after hours of deliberation, the jury pronounces him guilty. Scout, Jam and Dill sneak into the courthouse to see the trial and sit on the balcony with Maycomb's black population. They are stunned at the verdict because, to them, the evidence was so clearly in Tom's favor. Atticus is still happy that by his logical defense, he forced the jury to take so long for pronouncing the decision. Usually, the decision would be made in minutes because a black man's word would not be trusted. Atticus thinks about making an appeal and deliberating the jury to reconsider their decision. However, Tom gets frightened of punishment and tries to escape from his prison and is shot to death in the process. Both Scout and Jam are sad about the outcome of the trial as they sense the defeat of their father as the defeat of goodness. Bob Ewell, on the other hand, is angry over Atticus for confronting him and trying to expose him in front of the jury. He decides to take revenge at and one night when Jam and Scout are walking home from the Halloween pub play at their school, he follows them home in the dark, then runs at them and attempts to kill them with a large kitchen knife. Jam tries to defend themselves while Scout, who is wearing a confining ham-shaped wire costume and cannot see what is going on, is helpless throughout the attack. Jam is still a child and cannot do much against Bob Evil. At the same time, a mysterious man in a black hood comes to the children's rescue. He snatches Bob's knife from him and stabs him with that while saving the kids. Jam realizes that the mysterious man is Boo Radley. Boo then takes the kids to their home. When Atticus comes to know about it, he informs Heck Tate, the county sheriff. Mr. Tate decides to keep Boo's involvement in Mr. Evil's death quiet. He notes in his file that Bob Ewell fell on his own knife during an alcoholic stupor and thus died. Atticus is not happy about it as he wants Boo Radley to face trial. However, Scout explains to Atticus that Boo is like a mockingbird and that punishing him would be like killing a mockingbird. Scout walks Boo home and imagines how he has viewed the town and observed her, Jam and Dill over the years from inside his home. Boo goes inside, closes the door and Scout never sees him again. So this is it for today. We will continue to discuss the history of American English literature. Please stay connected with the discourse. Thanks and regards.